Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the podcast and Merry Christmas. I am so excited to have Abby on with me again today. Hi, Abby. Hello. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas to you. And I, we should say Merry Christmas Eve Eve as people are listening to this two days before Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah. I think that's a thing, right? I think it's a thing. I don't know. I just, I just calculate it by when I can start eating all the cookies. <laughs> Well, I think that that can happen at any time, just like music. You know, there's like this whole debate about when people can start listening to Christmas music. Oh, and for sure. I think what? it's when the time changes, right? No, that's too late. <laughs> no, when the time changes, like end of October, beginning of November. When does the time change? It, um, it changed, I think, at the beginning of November this year. Oh, you think that's I, too late? When do I you think start? so. Okay, here's, here's my rule. And okay. I think this should be the actual, like, law, okay. Okay. like written in stone. Got it. In as stone. soon as the stores start pulling out Christmas stuff, <gasps> then the Christmas music, I comes think on. the Christmas music can come on, which is like in July. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and let's, let's, when I say stores, let's think of like Hobby Lobby because okay. they start pulling stuff out like in the summertime Yeah, they because do. people have to start on their Christmas crafts that early. It's true. It is true. And so I think if there is Christmas stuff in the stores, then I think we can listen be, to Christmas music. Yes, I think it should be legal. And, to and my to husband music. says not until after Thanksgiving. Oh, that's his hard and fast rule. But he's not home all day, so I I feel like when he gets home, we turn it off. <laughs> when he's not home, we can listen to Christmas music. Now, do you feel like that's being rebellious when he's gone? <laughs> I don't because he doesn't care as long as okay, we're not good. all singing it when he gets home. I'm just kidding. Everybody put the, put the Christmas bells away. <laughs> Dad's home. <laughs> put the ugly Christmas sweaters oh, in the drawers. And <laughs> yes. Okay. So anyway. then the other question is, when do you take the tree down? Oh. So do well, you go think... all the way till after the new year? Okay. You want to hear a funny story? I'm ready. Um, Brooklyn, my oldest, was born the day after Christmas. She was our Christmas miracle. Aww. And yeah, she missed Christmas Day by five hours. I was so bummed wow. out. I actually wanted her to be born on Christmas Day because I thought either way, she's going to have a Christmas birthday because her due right. date was the 27th. And I just thought, you know what? It would be great for her to just share a birthday with Jesus. And yeah. so I wanted her to be born on Christmas Day, but she came five hours late and it was still the greatest Christmas ever. Aww. As a matter of fact, that day, we went because we knew that she was coming. And, and so we celebrated Christmas with our families the day or the week before. And that year was 2005 was when uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, the first movie came out. And so we went to see that movie. And um, then after that was when we went to, or we went to see the movie. We went to, and had a really nice dinner, just the two of us. And Aww. then we went straight to the hospital and had a baby a few hours what later. Fun. It was awesome. But wow. I have a newborn. And I was trying to figure out this whole mom thing. And in, in my mind, I was like, well, you know, babies don't take a lot of time because all they do is like sleep and you change their diaper every now and then <laughs> they you feed them every now and then. Well, my baby, as it turns out, she was tongue tied. And so it would take her literally an hour to eat. To eat. And then I had to feed her another couple hours later. So oh, no. anyway. I held her in my arms all the time and I was glad to do that. And it was the greatest time ever. But I remember vividly my mother-in-law coming over at, in February, it was Valentine's day. Oh, no. And she goes, do you want to help you take down your Christmas tree? <laughs> no I'm way. Like, that is hilarious. And you're like, why not? In a few more months, I can start listening to Christmas music. Might as well leave it up. <laughs> right. So, so oh, that's, that that's year, hilarious. it was still up on Valentine's day, but um, that is hilarious. <laughs> but wow. typically, no, I don't, we don't leave it out there. I, I feel like after Christmas, like all the magic is gone. Yeah. From it, and then I'm ready to take it down. Like right at the new year. How about you? See, and Well, I feel my family, I guess all my weaknesses come out around the holidays <laughs> because, um, the day after Christmas, I'm like, okay, we've had it up. This has been awesome. Christmas is over. Let's take it down. And they're like, wait, can we have it up for like one more day? I'm like, nope, Christmas is over. It's the 26th. <laughs> Let's get it down. <laughs> and I want to not be that way. So I'm going to work yeah. on it this year. But okay. sometimes okay. we put it up at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and by then it's like, it's been up for five weeks. All the pine needles are on the ground. Right. I just really want to oh. mop. Like I really just want to mop. So on the 26th, I start taking it down and they all cry and Oh um, my goodness. So yeah, but we're working so, through okay, that. Okay. Wait, let's talk about this pine needle okay. thing then, because <laughs> that means you have a real Christmas tree Yes, as we opposed do. to the fake cheesy one that we, it's used true. To have. we don't even have one now because we're 
nomads, but <laughs> before nomad lifestyle, we had it. <laughs> yeah, that's a, not conducive to carrying trees with it's you, actually. Not. <laughs> actually, last year we went and bought one at the Dollar Tree and oh, there you decorated go. it with little teeny. I Perfect. told the girls, I think we went and I said, we have like $15 to spend. Like that's our budget. We're going to spend $15 on Christmas decorations because oh, we were in the RV. And so we bought a little tiny Christmas tree and little tiny ornaments and we decorated and it was really fun. We oh, had a really cute. Good time See, to those it. are the best memories though. And that's probably what they will remember, you know? Yeah. Yes. So, so do you guys, do you go like cut we do. down your own we tree? We go cut down our own tree and it's really, it's always our, it, it's really a fun tradition that we do. We go out to breakfast um, and then we pack up and we go out and we chop down a tree. We sometimes take our snow machine. Sometimes we take our snowshoes cause we're usually plowing through snow and then we drag it home and it has to dry for a while. And then we put it up. Oh my goodness. That's so fun. Yeah. But you're, you're backwards Barbie. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so I also lumberjack, I guess. <laughs> I, I've never ever in my whole life cut down a tree and I think it would be fun. Oh, I mean, I've heard of people doing It's that, really but. fun. We love it. Growing up, we had a fake tree though. And it was just as, I think that whatever your traditions are, are fun because they're your traditions because yeah. we had a fake tree and it was so much fun to pull it out of the box and like straighten out the branches. And right. <laughs> so, you know, it was all, I think because that's not what Christmas is about. I think that whatever the traditions are, you just make it fun as a family, but we love to go get our own tree. That's it doesn't so come without, you know, the family drama of I like this tree. You like that tree. Who picks the best tree? <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> pros and cons. <laughs> yes. When Garrett was a kid, they have this funny story that my mother-in-law tells about. Um, I don't remember how old he was, but they, they bought a tree. They didn't buy it out of, you know, they didn't go cut it down themselves because typically in Southern California, they, they do have tree farms there, but it's not very common to go cut down your own tree though. Some people right. do, but anyway, they went and bought a tree um, from a tree lot and it was wrapped up and I think they got like a wow. really good deal on it because it was all wrapped in like netting and stuff. And they took it home, they put it in their living room, stood it up and then they cut the netting off of it. And oh, as no. it like opened up, bugs flew out oh, everywhere. Oh, gross. No. Isn't that awful? <gasps> oh I my know. gosh. That would be my worst. I would, buy, I would never get a real tree after that. I, I would know. certainly buy a fake tree after that. Right. Oh yes. my goodness. Yeah. Someday oh, we'll get a real funny. tree because I think it would be fun. But oh. then, you, you know, if you have a fake tree, you don't have the hassle of the pine needles. Oh, the cleanup, the, the pine floor. needles and the cat that likes to climb up it. Oh, and then, oh, yeah. and then yeah. we always take the Christmas tree and we stick it out in the snow after Christmas. And then it lives there all winter and the kids like to decorate it. And then they put bird oh, seed on it for the birds. And it's like a whole thing. <laughs> That is so funny. I can't yeah. even imagine that. It's so. very fun. Now, do you do um, colored lights or white lights? Oh, well, I white lights all the way. Yeah. All I the like way. The white lights. So before I had kids, you know, when I had all of my ridiculous ideas of what it yeah. was going to be like <laughs> to be a parent, right. I, I really love interior design and I like things to look very pretty and right. orderly. Yes. And I, I had, you know, friends who had kids and their Christmas trees always looked tacky because they had, at least in my mind, because they had like their little kid ornaments and yes, they were totally colorful mismatched. And, <laughs> and I, I used to think just like I used to think I would never homeschool. Right. I used to think, well, when we have kids, yeah. our tree is still going to look really pretty and oh. I'm going to have all the pretty matching ornaments and the pretty twinkly right. white lights. And then I had kids and you know, it's as soon as they're able to make you the tacky little ornaments, oh. like they're like your favorite. Yeah, absolutely. And you can't not put them on the tree. And, and now every year you like to bring them out and remember yes. that. Yes. Yes. And so now like that is what I treasure. Oh. I love the cute little ornaments that they make with their little pictures on them. And yes, because that's what makes it your family tree. And absolutely. it doesn't need to look like a tree from a yeah. hotel lobby. It shouldn't absolutely. look like that. Which no, it shouldn't. Mine did before. And I but that's because that. before we had kids, right? Right. Exactly. Right. I yeah. still have mine from when I was a little kid and it was a, a cuz my mom did the same thing. It was all the homemade gifts. Uh -huh. So the one I keep from when I was a kid, it was a styrofoam ball cut in half, which was the ma the manger, and then a little Play-Doh Jesus, which looks like a gremlin in it, and it hangs on a <laughs> pipe cleaner and every year I get that out and I <laughs> and I love that one. But we uh. I love having the homemade the homemade ornaments. And then every year we I buy the family an ornament that I wrap up and they open it when we decorate the tree and it has something significant oh. to do with what we did that year. If it was a trip we took or anything that was kind of significant to our family that year. So, so that fun. then when we decorate the tree, it's like a little going through history, you yeah. know, time. So that's always fun. Do you put the year on it or do you have- Yeah, I write the year on it. Okay. Yep. 
So yeah. That is so fun. That's a great tradition. I love that. Yeah. I don't know anyone doing that. It's fun. Um, and then I, yeah. I don't know how the kids are going to divide them up when it's time, but they'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Exactly. That's why that was invented. <laughs> what other traditions fun. do you have for you and your family? Oh, I just the cookie day, I mean, baking day mm -hmm. and, you know, and I love one of the blessings of homeschool is we don't take the two weeks off right at one chunk. You know, we take days here and there all through the season, right. you know, we take a day off to just bake, you know, and then we take a day off to decorate. And so I just love the freedom that we have with homeschool just when it comes to the holidays as well. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. So, it is so much fun. Yeah. So we can also do baking day. That is um, something we started, uh, Brooklyn was pretty young and I think Lacey was a baby when we started that. And, um, and that's been really fun because then you can bake goodies and then you get, that's yep. a, a great opportunity to go around to yes, neighbors, neighbors and friends and just yep. be totally. able to, because it might be a little bit awkward to go in June and be like, we baked you some cookies. <laughs> we, we brought you an ice cream cone that's melted. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, it is. It's a, it's a great outreach to do. Yes. Yeah. And absolutely. you're learning fractions. So check it off the list. You just learned your fractions by baking. Right. Exactly. <laughs> do you have a favorite cookie? Um, yes. So I, we, I always baked with my grandma and my mom when I was little and now my kids bake with my mom, grandma and, and myself. So we just have this long tradition of baking together and we make a, a, a Danish cookie called a spritz, but they're okay. not like the spritz that you buy at the store. They're these little round fun. And we take an old, this sounds gross, but it's not like one of those old fashioned meat grinders, but instead you have this fun little plate you put at the end of it. So when you, when you when you push it through, it makes a little fun little star shape and then you put it into wreaths. Oh, fun. Anyway, they're amazing. I think th they're my favorite just because they have such a fun history of making it. My mom made them with her grandma. I made them with my grandma. My kids make them with their grandma. So that's probably my very favorite cookie. So fun. Well, the most yeah. important question when, at, when making any cookie yes. ever is how is the dough? Because absolutely, I love cookie dough. <laughs> yep. Way more than the cookies. And the spritz yes. cookie dough is hands down the best. Absolutely. B better best. than chocolate chip cookie dough? A hundred percent, I think. What? I don't know. It's just amazing. I'll send you some. Okay. Send me some. Because... <laughs> What's your favorite Christmas cookie? Um, I don't, I don't, <laughs> dough. <laughs> The dough, the dough. Christmas cookie. Oh, you know what's the best is um, ginger, ginger cookie dough. The oh, dough from like, like homemade. What? No. The dough though? Oh, that's sad. I don't make, I don't even like, like gingerbread cookies. No, nope, not no. going to happen. Okay. I don't I'll like eat them. it for you. Okay. <laughs> you eat them for me. I don't know what the ones are called. I should know these, um, but I love the ones that are, they're like the little um, like balls with rolled in um, powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. Yeah. Everybody has called? different names for those, but I know. I call good. them snowballs. <laughs> sure. Are yeah. they like Italian wedding cakes or something? I don't know. I don't know. I they're don't just know. the little snowballs. Yeah, but they're those are good. But I, I mean, like, truly, I would prefer. I like sugar cookies. Probably yes. the best to eat. Yeah. But the frosting has to be good. And then, yeah, for sure. But for dough, definitely chocolate chip. I know that's so boring. That's, that's not, not like a Christmas, Christmas cookie. cookie. No. no. I know, but it's I just really not. like chocolate chip cookie dough. Well, then you just, that's your Christmas <laughs> prerogative. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I would make chocolate chip cookie dough. And if you make it without, put, if you're not going to bake it, if you're making it just to eat it, right. if you don't put the egg in it and you oh. substitute it with, you substitute the egg for um, oil, like vegetable yeah. oil or olive oil, yeah. just put a little bit just for the, so it has kind of the same consistency. Right. Then you won't get salmonella? It, you won't get salmonella. <gasps> and it's just as good. Wow. However, if you have like farm fresh eggs, you could probably just put the raw egg in there, which I mean, I eat cookie dough. I eat cookie anyway. dough all the time, but Je it bothers Jesse thinks I'm going to die of salmonella. But well, see, now, it will be a worthy death though, because it's that good. <laughs> <laughs> now you can substitute Perfect. the oil for the egg, but you can't oh bake goodness. them obviously that way Ugh. without the egg. So just make yourself a big one. Well, so if cake. anybody's doing their Christmas baking today, you're a little late because, <laughs> so we're just saying, we're just talking about Christmas cookies, but hopefully you've already made, have them made. <laughs> hopefully, because if you try to go to the store today and get yeah, anything, they have no better. Good luck with that. <laughs> Which by the way, do you know what one of the greatest things is that I ever did on Christmas Eve was I, I needed some food. I, I mean, you know, not everything for Christmas, but I realized I needed a bunch of stuff and I do the, um, Walmart curbside pickup oh, thing. Yeah. 
Right. And I did it on Christmas Eve and they went and did all my shopping for me. Really? It was amazing. And it was, I felt so bad. I I was going to say, I'm sad for them. Well, I drove in. I mean, they have to work anyway, but I drove into the parking lot and I literally wanted to like roll down my window and be like, suckers, (laughs) everyone else who's going into the store to buy their stuff. I'm like, they did my (laughs) shopping for me and it was free. Oh my goodness. That's (laughs) hilarious. It was great. So if you need to shop on Christmas Eve and you have Aww. a Walmart curbside pickup near you, grab a like a have a, them shop. Yeah. For you. And grab a peppermint mocha and take it to them. Right. You could do that. <laughs> and your plate of cookies. That's a great idea. Yes. To the curbside bless, person. Bless the people who bring your your yes, groceries. Bring you your anyway, groceries. It was Aww. so fun. But hey, let's I take a that. quick break and then let's okay. come back and talk some more about this. Perfect. All right. So we're talking about Christmas memories and Christmas traditions. Um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about Christmas. And, and I don't mean in the sense of like, what is Christmas all about? Because we all right. know what Christmas is about, but I know you and I have talked a lot about how sometimes Christmas can be really hard. For right. People. Like Christmas expectations. I think Christmas that expectations. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about Christmas expectations. So what do you expect Christmas? I mean, what does your average woman expect Christmas to look like? What's your ideal Christmas? Give me your, give me your ideal Christmas. Me, my ideal Christmas. Yeah. What would your dream Christmas look like? So for me, it's, um, (laughs) my dream Christmas is never anything, um, like what it looks like in reality, but I think that's life. I mean, I think everything is like that. You know, we have our fantasies about marriage and parenting and homeschooling and just life in general. And we, we have this idea of what we think it's going to look like. Right. Like the magazine. Like the magazine and like Pinterest. And then we actually get into it and we're like, huh, that doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to look like. And I feel like for me, Christmas is often that way. You know, we, Mm -hmm. um, we love our family and, and I, I especially love being able to spend time with my girls and celebrate the birth of Jesus. But, right. um, but I know for me, like my ideal Christmas would, if I had it my way all the time, mm-hmm. I would love to invite people, just families, people, friends, other family members, strangers, whoever, people who don't have anyone else to spend Christmas with. And cause the thought of other people being alone on Christmas is just devastating to me. Right. And right. so, um, so I would love to just invite a whole bunch of people over to our house and amazing. just have great fellowship and not worry so much. I, I, I do not like being in the kitchen. <laughs> I oh. told you that before. <laughs> right. That is not something that I enjoy. I cook out of necessity, not out of right. pleasure. And so for me to spend hours and hours and hours in the kitchen, slaving over the turkey and over the ham and over the, you know, green beans and potatoes and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my goodness. Right. Can we just make a ham sandwich? Like <laughs> totally. that'd be so much easier. Can we order but, pizza? But I want it to look pretty. So I want to put out the right. fine china because I have beautiful Aww. fine china that my grandmother passed down to me. So I want to put the sandwich on a, you know, really pretty plate, <laughs> nice plate. <laughs> with my pretty cookies. I love that. Um, yeah, I mean, I do, I do enjoy the food. It's just that the prep is so much work, but I would rather spend that time actually just fellow having good fellowship with other right. people who just want to hang out and have good fellowship and play games and play Christmas right. music until my ears, you know, hurt. And, <laughs> um, and so, so that's what I would love. One year we, this was, uh, maybe, maybe about seven or eight years ago. Um, Lacey was a baby when we did this, we took a collection um, of blankets from just people. I think I actually just put it out on Facebook and said, Hey, we're going to just take up a blanket collection and we're going to go deliver mm-hmm. on, them on Christmas uh, day to homeless people. And then we bought a bunch of sandwich stuff and we just made sandwiches and oh, we made wow. little, you know, sandwich goodie bags and we had blankets and we just went and drove around town on Christmas morning and found homeless people because in the town that we were from, there were a plethora wow. of them. And, um, and so we just went and found people who were in need and we were just like, Hey, do and you delivered need blanket? That is so sandwich? precious. And it was so much fun wow. we need to do that again. Um, it was such a blessing. That and, sounds uh, amazing. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, my, my idea of what Christmas would look like is not usually my reality of what no. Christmas looks like. And that's okay. Um, right. Because it's not all about me and what I want. It's about 
the right, family. What and, it's about. And I think that's where we yeah. get hung up on the Christmas ex- expectations because we, we wait all year for what it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. And we see what everybody, what we think everybody else is doing. And so I think some of the expectations are, you know, there's so much joy, so much laughter, mm-hmm. so much fun, so many traditions, the cookies, the, all these things. But I think there's, there's the reality of, you know, this year's the, I, I think of my dear friend and this will be her first Christmas. Her, her mom just passed away. Mm-hmm. And I think, man, that's not very joyful. And I remember yeah. one year on Christmas day, um, Jesse was, he was law enforcement. So he was working and it was, I was taking down our tree on Christmas day with two little tiny, you know, two kids under three at the time, two kids under two, um, taking down the tree, packing up the house. Cause we were leaving town. And I, I was looking at everybody's Facebook feeds. Cause that's so, you know, that's so hard. And everybody was having all these amazing times yeah. and I'm taking down the tree alone at home while my husband's at work. And I stop and I think, you know, that's probably what, I mean, there's probably more people having a realistic, mm-hmm. you know, a harder time on Christmas than what we anticipate or what we expect. But I think about expectations and I think how, um, as I was, as I was taking down the tree that day and kind of home alone with the crying baby and the ear infection and the everything. And I thought, you know, when Mary was getting, when Mary was engaged, you know, she was probably dreaming about the dream wedding and the, the celebrations because they had beautiful celebrations then. And, you know, oh, the word Joseph and I are going to settle down and we're going to have the perfect you know, birth and I'll be surrounded by all the women that love me while I'm having my baby and just all the expectations that we have now when we have a wedding and then when we have a baby and then when we have Christmas. And, you know, I I think the first Christmas was a Christmas full of um, expectations that didn't happen. You know, all, all Mm -hmm. the expectations she probably dreamed of as a little girl growing up, none of it happened. And yet when we read, um, when we read the the story of of how it all played out, she didn't grumble and complain. She didn't say, well, everybody else's, you know, Christmas or everybody, because it was Christmas, looked like this. You know, she said, yes, Lord, is whatever you say I'll do. And then she ran to tell Elizabeth. She ran because she was excited. All her expectations were blown. And yet she found her joy and her excitement in in the Christ, you know, in in Jesus. And um, it says, she said, my soul praises the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. And I think mm. when all of our Christmas expectations, you know, when the, the ham is burned and the kids are fighting and the tree decorations are falling off and broken when and there's family drama and there's family drama because that's just how it works, you know, and, and, you know, maybe there's a family member that's not there because you don't know where they are or all the stories that the people are listening to right now, everybody has their own hurt that comes into this season. And are we able to say, my soul praises the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, as Mary did. And I think the only way, I know that the only way we can do that is when we really look at the baby, because that's all that Mary kept her eyes on. She kept her eyes on God's plan for her life and on the baby she was carrying. And when we keep our eyes on Jesus, all those expectations, all those traditions, all those they kind of fade into the background and there's nothing wrong with those things. They're beautiful. They're celebrations of, of what God has done, but they fade into the background when we really keep our eyes on the Lord. So as exciting as it is to talk about all the fun Christmas things, we have to remember that most people around us have a lot of expectations that aren't being met this holiday. So um, we keep our eyes on, on how it was at the very first Christmas. And we realize we probably are it's probably a little bit more normal Christmas, what we're having. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. that's such a good reminder, Abby, just to, to choose joy mm-hmm. in the midst of it. Um, I mean, there and is, it is a choice. joy. It is a choice. And, you know, you look at our society today and how, and everything that is happening, Satan is doing his best job to take our eyes off of Jesus Yeah. at Christmas time at Easter, you know, um, just in families in general, you, you just look at our culture and you're like, man, could, could they remove Jesus anymore? Right. And so to especially remove him from the very day that he came in, into the world to right. save us, you know, it just, you're, you're so right on that. It's, we, we have to keep our eyes focused on him. Right. And when we take our eyes off of him and start focusing on all of the other stuff, that's when we yep. find disappointment. Right. Um, I mean, imagine can, if Larry, 
Totally. And imagine if Mary sat in that stable and she was looking at the stinky cows and at the manure piled up and at the, you know, and then even looking at all the other people that had the, you know, there, there was no room at the inn because it was full. And she could have thought all those people in there with their perfect little, you know, their perfect little first Christmases, but she didn't, she kept her eyes on that baby. And it's so easy yeah. for us to look around and say, well, look how they're spending Christmas and look what they're getting to do for Christmas. And, and then it starts to, it takes away the joy. But I think Mary is our greatest example of when all the expectations are blown out of the water, yeah. that what remains is the, the Christ child. Yeah, that's right. I was reading uh, the other day, Psalm 1611, it says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. And at Christmas time, if we are in the presence of God, there is right. fullness of joy and we can find our yes. joy even in the midst of our trials. Absolutely. Um, because he is joy. He is Christmas. He's Christ mass. I mean, yeah. that's, it's all about him. Absolutely. And so taking our focus off of the gifts and the food and, and mm -hmm. everything else that we feel pressured into to doing right. Right. Um, and just focusing on our savior. I mean, there is just yeah. no greater joy in, than doing that, um, Absolutely. being in the presence of God. And so Yep. And there's nothing music, wrong yeah. with those things because they're ways of celebrating, you know, they're, they're yeah. incredible ways of celebrating, but we have to remember they are ways of celebrating Jesus. They're not, yes. they're not celebrating anything other than that. So when we right. give gifts, let us remember the greatest gift. When we're yes. eating food with everybody, let us remember that's a gift that God has given to us. So, right. you know, it's great to celebrate, but let's remember what we're celebrating. Yep. Yep. That's right. So good. And it, it was interesting. We were listening to Christmas music, of course, because that's what we do. And, and let me say, Garrett does not love Christmas music. And he typically won't start really listening to it with us until like after Thanksgiving. <laughs> December 23rd, tonight, today. Right. Yes. <laughs> but when we can listen to it, when it's just the girls and I, we will blast Christmas music. And uh, I think we were listening to Mariah Carey. And Lacey said, to me, she said, mom, is Mariah Carey a Christian? And I said, no. I don't think so, honey. I'm pretty sure she's not. I mean, I can't judge her heart, but I, you know, I, I right. don't <laughs> believe that she professes to be a Christian. And she said, you know, I, it's interesting that she sings Christian music. Right. And, and I've thought about that and I've thought, you know, that's it. Christmas is the only time that people who mm -hmm. don't even believe in Jesus sing about right. his grace and his glory. That <laughs> incredible. Like, ha ha jokes on you. Like, <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Do you even know oh. what you're saying? Oh, and, it um, will be like every knee will bow. You know, it reminds right. oh, me of that verse. Every oh, knee yes. will bow and there will be a day where every voice will sing, you know? Every, yep. Every voice Isn't will proclaim amazing? the goodness of Christ. Oh. And, um, and so it's, it's kind of funny. Do you have a, a favorite Christmas song? Oh my goodness. Okay. So here's one. I asked that to my, my, no, my two, when my little boy was three, he came out and he said, mama, I know my favorite Christmas song. And I said, what is it? And he said, the little drummer boy. And I said, why honey? And he says, cause I can say bum over and over and I don't get in trouble. <laughs> ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. <laughs> that is really Isn't funny. That funny. So I would have to say the little drummer boy is probably my favorite now because I can say bum. <laughs> wait, 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 back it up. Is bum a bad word in your house? No, it's totally not. Okay. That's what's funny because I, I wipe my children's bums and sometimes I spank my children's bums. But for some reason, he just thought, I just, it's the heart of a boy, I guess. He just thought, oh, I can just sing potty talk. <laughs> I don't know, but I, that, that goes is, down in history. <laughs> that is really funny. Oh my goodness. Uh, that does definitely go down in history. You'll my never listen to that song the same. <laughs> I will think of Colson always when I hear that. <laughs> that is so funny. My favorite one uh, by far since I was a teenager is Oh Holy Night by Sandy Patty. I oh. love that song and I love the way she sings it. Like I could just listen to her oh. sing that over and over. Okay, and you over. have to link to it somehow. So I we will can link hear to it. it. Okay. And perfect. of course, you know, a lot of people listening to this are probably like, Who's Sandy? Who's Patty? Sandy Patty? <laughs> and now you all know how old we are. <laughs> well, and she's uh, even a little bit before our generation. Uh, um but uh, she, I think she's more like our parents' generation, maybe in between. Really? Because then that shows, really? I, I listened to her in high school. That's how hip I was. Did you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I feel like when I was in high school, like she was not a, you know, artist that teenagers would really listen to, except for Abby, of course. Except for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I did listen to her Christmas album and it was awesome. Oh, fun. Fun, Yeah. Fun. The other day I, I asked somebody something about a Christmas album and I was like, it's kind of weird that we still call them Christmas albums because 
we don't listen to albums anymore, yeah. but what would you call it now? Like your the Christmas, Christmas station on the Christmas station yeah. on iTunes. <laughs> totally on Pandora. Or, I don't know. On my Pandora. Christmas playlist. That's what they say. My Christmas playlist, right? Or is even that yeah, too but, old? Well, no, because I'm talking about like specific, like you wouldn't say what's your favorite Christmas playlist because I'm talking about a specific. Oh yeah, that's true. An artist. A, a specific album. I don't but know But it's what no longer say. an album. I'm what's your have favorite find- Christmas eight track? <laughs> exactly <laughs> cassette tape <laughs> oh my goodness oh my word we're gonna have Fun. to i'm gonna have to find a new word for album because i don't think that's a thing anymore anyway and you can go to the schoolhouse rocked facebook page and tell us what we should be calling it if it's yes. not album <laughs> if it's not album yes go on the page and tell us Anyway, it's so much fun talking to you and I am so grateful for you. Um, I pray that everyone listening to this has an amazing Christmas. We love you guys so much and you are a gift to us. Um, your, your prayers, your encouragement, uh, you know, just this week again, we, in one day, we actually got two emails just from people uh, just encouraging us and saying, thank you for what you're doing with Schoolhouse Rock, with the podcast, with the movie, um, you know, with everything. And, um, and it was just such a blessing. It, we, we need that encouragement and um, we just need to know that there's people out there actually listening. And so we appreciate that. And we're so grateful for those of you who take the time to just pop on this podcast. You could be listening to a million other podcasts, but you've chosen to listen to this one today and listen to Abby and I talk about our goofy holiday <laughs> traditions and Christmas, you know, traditions and, and cookies and all that stuff. Um, but we are grateful for you. And as you're thinking through Christmas and, and as the year is coming to an end, we would love to just ask you guys to one, continue praying for us. We have a monumental task ahead of us to get the movie done, and there's just a whole lot that is going into that, and so we would love your prayers for that. And then as you are considering any end-of-the-year donations, um, we would love for you to just pray about um, supporting the ministry of Schoolhouse Rock. Everything we do costs money. And, um, and so we are very grateful for those who have come alongside us and supported us financially. And if you feel like the Lord is uh, putting it on your heart to do that, we would love to have you as part of just our financial support team. Um, you can go to schoolhouserocked.com slash give, and that'll take you right to a page where you can easily just put in your information and, um, give a year end donation or a beginning of the year donation or whatever it is that the Lord puts on your heart. Cause we definitely, are in need of financial support. So, um, so thank you again. And Abby, thank you for being on with me. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, Merry Christmas. And we love you guys. Have an awesome Christmas and uh, we will see you back here next week. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.